Today, we're going to be busting 50 of Daisy's biggest myths. Keep in mind, Daisy is over 10 years old, and in this time, it has experienced a lot of change, and with this comes a lot of myths and rumours. But today, we're going to put your comments and suggestions to the test and find out the truth, with the use of a bit of Daisy science. The first myth on our list is that you can distract wolves by throwing raw meat at them. I tested this by throwing some raw meat at a wolf, and every time, it will get distracted by the meat. To confirm that this was just a meat, I threw an assortment of other items, but this had no effect. Confirming that this myth is in fact true, you can use raw meat to distract wolves. The next myth is that armor piercing rounds will do more damage to armored opponents. To test this, I shot an armored opponent three times with a standard 9x39 ammunition, which did an average damage of 32.5. I then repeated this, but with armor piercing rounds, and to my surprise, it did the exact same amount of damage busting at this myth. They do in fact do the same damage when it comes to armoured opponents, but though it's important to note, armoured piercing rounds will ruin a vest quicker, which will give you an edge in a firefight over the long term. While it may not deal more damage to armoured opponents, the myth is that it will penetrate surfaces more effectively, dealing more damage when shooting through surfaces. To test this, I set up my test subject again and shot him three times through a wooden wall with normal 9x39 rounds. This did roughly 15 damage a shot. I then repeated the test with armor piercing rounds and found on average it did over double the damage, dealing roughly 38 HP a shot. So this myth is in fact true, armor piercing rounds are much better when it comes to trying to get a wall bang. The next myth is that you can log in on top of a landmine and survive the explosion. So I had my test subject log out and I placed a landmine in the exact spot, although upon logging in this myth was quickly busted, which is surprising as I could have sworn I tested this years ago and it wouldn't explode. The next myth is that the quality of the restraint determines how long it takes to break out. To test this, I restrain myself with badly damaged rope, damaged rope and pristine rope. And if we compare these side by side, we can see it took the exact same amount of time to break out. To make sure this wasn't just with rope, I repeated this test using handcuffs, but again, there was no difference. Which busts this myth, the quality of the restraint does not affect the time it takes to wriggle out. In fact, the only thing that does is the type of restraint. The next myth is that cooking gasoline will cause it to explode. I'm not sure exactly how this myth originated as you can't even fit a jerry can in a fire, but I filled a cooking pot with gasoline and tried that. But after 10 minutes, nothing happened. I tried the same, but this time having a cooking pot above the fire on a tripod, but again, it did not explode, busting this myth. I'm guessing that this originates from the other myth, which is that cooking gas canisters will cause them to explode, which is quickly proven true after placing one in a fire. And this is true for small, medium and large canisters. The next myth is that a trip wire trap will stop a car in its tracks, but after placing my trap, I drove over it just fine. What is important to note is that the car will actually trigger the trap. This myth probably originates from the other myth that a fence kit will stop your car in its tracks, and this used to be true, but as evident, will no longer stop a car. However, you can place fireplaces on the road which the car will interact with, although I'm not sure it'll ever be enough to stop a car, maybe if you place enough of them. So apparently standing on top of fireworks will kill you. And I quickly found out it does in fact damage you. Not by a lot, but I guess if a player was low enough or you wanted to troll an AFK player, you could take one out. But it does take a lot of fireworks. So this myth is true and I'd love to see someone pull it off. The next myth is that all armour gives the same health protection, the only difference being the durability. It's important to know not all vests are armour. For example, an assault vest and high capacity vest won't protect you any more than just wearing no vest. The vests that do give you protection are police vests, press vests and plate carriers. And when using an AKM, the police vest will take 45 HP damage. The same can be said for the press vest, which on average also takes 45 HP damage. What is surprising is that when shot wearing a plate carrier, it only does 27 HP damage. Keep in mind that all these damages are only for when using the AKM. For example, shooting a player in the chest with no armor does about 90 damage. So a police and press vest will reduce damage by half, whereas a plate carrier by three times the amount. Again, I could have sworn that they all used to give the same protection. Perhaps the plate carrier received a buff in a previous update. So this myth is kind of true. A police vest and press vest will offer the same protection in terms of one direct shot, although a plate carrier is better and will offer more protection. The next myth is that a rangefinder will block a bullet. When testing with the AKM, this is really inconsistent. Sometimes it would block the bullet and other times it wouldn't. 
I learned is that it was due to the penetration values of the AKM dropping to a lower caliber weapon produced more consistent results. A rangefinder will block bullets, although this is dependent on the caliber. The chances of a rangefinder blocking a bullet are reduced when using more powerful calibers. I decided to further test this with binoculars, which also worked, and then handheld scopes, although these didn't seem to work. Apparently, you can die if you give your character too much medication. After giving my character about 20 of every medication in the game, I was fine. I didn't lose any health and my character didn't even throw up, busting this myth. The next myth might be the biggest one in DayZ, and that's that shooting grenades on a vest will cause them to explode. So I loaded my test subject up with four badly grenades and got to shooting. When shot on the player, on a dead player, and on a vest on the floor, they will not explode. The next myth is that while they won't explode on your vest, they will explode in your clothes if you get shot enough. But after shooting the player a lot, you can see that other items become ruined, but the grenades do not take any damage. And as you may know, grenades will explode when ruined. However, this does not explain that sometimes players will explode when shot. I believe this is because you can shoot a player who has a landmine in their inventory and if shot enough, this will cause the player to explode. So next time you have a landmine, just make sure you're storing it in a container. The next myth is that you can shoot a tripwire trap to disable it. I wasn't sure if it meant shooting the grenade because that well explodes, but if you shoot the other stick without the grenade on, the trap will ruin and not trigger when you walk over it. You can even take the grenade off. So this myth is true, I guess, in both ways. Now, the next myth might be the oldest one in DayZ, and that's that you can cure Kuru, the cannibal disease, if you either stare at a teddy bear, have a teddy bear in your inventory, or hold a teddy bear. Now, I am certain that this is not true, but I gave myself Kuru and sat both holding a teddy bear, staring at the teddy bear, and having a teddy bear in my inventory, and I did this for over two hours, and it didn't cure me. Again, there's only one way to cure Kuru. But while this myth is busted, I'd love to see the devs add this to the game as so many people believe it. The next myth is that if you made it this far into the video, you should like the video and subscribe to the channel and you will then find a DMR on your next Daisy adventure. Apparently, wolves are scared of fire in Daisy. I tested this by surrounding myself in campfires to see if it would scare off the wolves, but they didn't seem to care and still attacked me. I then tried seeing if trying to fight them with a lit torch would scare them off, but again, had no effect. For my last attempt, I tried shooting them with a flare gun and again had no effect on the wolves, busting this myth, although it would make for a cool feature. The next myth is that you can't drown in DayZ, and this is kind of true. If you try to lay down in water, it will just force your character to stand up before you drown. However, if you fall unconscious in water, you can drown. For example, if you try to swim with a broken leg, you will go unconscious and drown. Or if you drive a car into water and don't get out in time. So this myth is busted, you can in fact drown, although it's quite difficult to do. The next myth is that with enough fishing, you can catch other items than just fish. Now, I think you can only catch wellies and cooking pots, and I actually managed to catch a few, but I just think it would be so cool if there was like a 0.1% chance to fish up a badly damaged AK or something. Now, the next myth is one of my own. I was so certain you could fish without bait on your hook. In fact, I'm sure this used to be the case, and that bait just increased your chances. But after fishing for half an hour with no bait, I caught nothing. So apparently the condition of your ammo doesn't affect the likelihood of a weapon jam. Like badly damaged ammunition is just as good as pristine. So I loaded up an AKM with a few mags of badly damaged ammo and after spraying hundreds of it, it didn't jam once. Now just for comparison, using a badly damaged weapon jams like every few shots. This actually really surprised me. I was then interested to see if the condition of the magazine had an effect. And while it does make your weapon jam occasionally, it's nowhere near as often as a badly damaged weapon. So I guess to conclude, the condition of the weapon is most important then the condition of the mag, and then the condition of the ammo doesn't really matter. The next myth is that you can kill a player with a flashbang. So I threw a flashbang at my test subject, and if it lands in close range, it does about 20 damage to an unarmored opponent. So after five flashbangs, I actually managed to kill him. So yes, this myth is true. With enough flashbangs, you can take out an opponent. So I've heard if you line it up just right and you're on low enough health, you can take out two people at once when you F11. And I mean, there's only really one way to test this. And to my surprise, it's actually true. So I guess if you only have one bullet, this could come in useful. A similar myth is that you can't F11 with a rubber slug. And again, there's only one way to test this. This myth is busted while rubber slugs are ineffective against other players. They work just fine on yourself. The next myth is that a radio attached to your backpack will protect you from a bullet. After shooting in the same spot with and without a radio, it did the exact same amount of damage. So this myth is busted. A similar myth is that weapons on your back will protect you from bullets. But again, the bullets just go straight through the weapon. I'm guessing this all stems from the myth that if you're holding something, it'll protect you from bullets. For example, a car door will reduce damage when shot. The best for this is actually sheet metal, which deflects nearly every shot. Although this doesn't work on all items, with a backpack, the bullets, again, just go straight through. 
At first, I thought it was only heavy items that protected you, but the cooking part works just fine. I guess it all comes down to the material, but I was surprised to find out the myth was true. Apparently, you can throw an item and it will distract a zombie, and this does actually work. You can kind of control the zombie as it will become alert and run towards the impact of the item, although it does make the zombie more alert and more likely to spot you, so you're probably better off just sneaking around. The next myth is that a bear will stop attacking you if you lie down. And I first thought this was true as it actually stopped, but I think it just has a range on its charge as when I did it standing up, the same thing happened. Pretty sure this myth exists because the bear's AI behaves a lot like a zombie's. Like it struggles to detect you if you don't move. You can even distract bears with throwing items to set the zombies. For example, if a bear attacks you and you just don't move after waking up from unconsciousness, it just won't notice you. So I guess there's some truth to the myth. Lying down won't stop an attack, but it will stop a bear from noticing you. The next myth is that if you tie a player up with barbed wire, it will constantly cut them if they try to escape. And I think this is less than a myth and more of a misconception. Like, it doesn't cut you when you're wriggling, but it will cut you one time once you've escaped, whether you're wearing gloves or not. So apparently, there's a predetermined order on which ammo will be loaded into your gun first when using different ammo types or different mags. What I found was that it will always load the largest ammo count first. So, for example, I have the most rubber slugs, so it loads that. But if all stacks of ammo are equal, it will load the one you put in your inventory first. This also works with mags, it'll always load the one with the most bullets in. So yeah, this myth is true. The next myth is that punching with a grenade will cause it to explode. As discussed earlier, grenades explode when ruined. So if I give a grenade 1 HP and punch with it, it should become ruined and explode. And as expected, this myth is true. Another grenade myth is that you can pick up another player's grenade and repin it. But as evident, we didn't have the option. However, this definitely used to be true, but I guess it was removed as it doesn't really make sense. The next myth is that you can shoot a player's gun to ruin it out of their hand. And while it took a lot of bullets, the myth is in fact true, and I think it's a nice little feature. So apparently the Gorka visor adds protection, it even says so in the item description. But after testing and shooting the test subject in all parts of the helmet, it gave the exact same protection with and without the visor. In fact, it actually one shot the player when using the visor in one of the shots. So no, this myth is busted, it does not add any protection, and the description should probably be changed. The next myth is that you can't shoot through water in DayZ, and there is some truth to this. Water will slow down your bullet a lot. So if there's a decent amount of water between you and your target, you won't hit them. However, if it's shallow, you can still hit them. The next myth is that a welder mask or gas mask will protect you from flashbangs, but I tested all the masks and was blinded every single time, busting this myth. Apparently, you can use gasoline to boil your food. Now, this definitely used to work, but they must have patched it as it just resorted in my food burning. So this myth is now busted. The next myth is that if you shoot a pistol in a chest holster, it will take damage and eventually ruin it. Now, after shooting it, I thought this myth was busted, but it only actually started taking damage after the chest holster is ruined. So there is some truth to the myth. The next myth is that dead bodies will protect you from bullets. And as evident in this clip, this is actually true. It could be worth hiding in bodies in firefights. Apparently, if you wear a burlap sack, it'll protect you from being flashbanged. But this myth was quickly busted. I also heard that you can't be blinded while in a car. And well, as evident, this is not true. Although sometimes the car will block the vision of the flashbang and you won't be blinded. So there's a bit of truth to it. The next myth is that if you eat a vitamin before eating raw meat, you'll be fine. To test this, I ate raw food with no vitamins, and in less than a minute, I was ill and my character was being sick. I then repeated the test, but I ate a vitamin pill first, and I was completely fine and didn't get sick. So this myth is true. So if you're in a pinch, you could get away with eating raw meat. The next myth is that the type of knife you use affects how much meat you'll get from any animal. And after testing every knife, we got the same amount of meat from every cow. What I did find was the amount of meat yield was dependent on how many bullets you used to kill the animal. If you actually spray an animal, you'll get barely any food compared to a well-calculated shot. I also tested the quality of the knife you use, but using a badly damaged knife will yield pristine meat. The only thing it does seem to affect is the quality of the bones. The next myth is that a sprint attack will do more damage than a heavy attack. And I was convinced that this was true, but once again, I've been proven wrong as both attacks dealt the same amount of damage to our test subject. And the final myth is that you can only ruin a car by shooting the engine. Now I originally thought this was true as I sprayed the car and it did no damage. But the fact is, you can only damage a car if you shoot the part labelled fender, bumper or engine. But the engine is still the quickest way to ruin it completely. And that's it for today's video. I hope you learned something new because I definitely did. I really enjoyed delving into some of the science behind Daisy. So if you'd like to see a second video, comment your myths down below.